What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Archangels Media. It's good to see you guys uh, again. Now, uh, there is... Um, oh, man, I'm having a bad beard day, bro. What am I going to do with myself? All right, so, uh, <laughs> so what I'm going to tell you is uh, uh, Cornell and I are pretty excited um, because... I'm hearing we... repeating on my end. Oh, that's on my end. Sorry. Yeah, it's probably because you're um, you got the YouTube yep. video up somewhere. No, I got Discord. Oh, Discord. Yeah, okay, that's what's going on. <laughs> yep, My bad. Go. Sorry to interrupt. Huh? That, that's what it was. Yeah. I was on the phone with you on Discord, and we we're on here on this. So yeah. So anyways, join the Discord. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, we we uh, we only pretend to have things together. You know, um, and that's the best we can do. Uh, but I, yeah, apparently, we're doing something right because, you know, Cornell and I, we've been doing this thing for seven months, eight months, something like that, right, Cornell? Yes. Yeah, and right. yeah, and you guys. You, there's like 3,200 of you, right? Um, and we just want to say thanks, yeah, you know, thank, thank you. you so much. You know, like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's kind of baffling, you know, uh, to say that we've got you know 3,270 some odd subscribers listening to Orthodox theology and following along on our book club and yeah. being active in our Discord, you know. Um, it's amazing. Um, we've, I think we have over 70 people, uh, in our discord, you know, looking at things and talking with each other. Um, our reach has gone out to Egypt where we have a gentleman who has, um, left Islam and is looking at becoming Christian and as just went to a church for the first time. Um, we have, uh, people throughout the United States. We've got former one Pentecostals. We've got other kinds of Pentecostals looking into orthodoxy because of what we're doing here on Archangels Media. And I am floored. You know, thank you guys so much uh, for your support. Um, and yeah, Cornell, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, just like being a little bit of part of everybody's journey and hopefully you can help our journey too by, you know, participating in the book club reading with us um mm -hmm. letting us know your feedback what you think about what we're reading um mm -hmm. you know this is uh this is everyone helping out each other so it isn't yeah. uh one way or another and I, and I think that's what makes archangels media maybe a little unique um to other channels is that you know i, I think we're we're just here to read books and talk about it there's that's simple as that <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, this really um, is the heart of it all. Yeah, we do some we do some other things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And so, uh, so a couple of things we've done this year. I mean, I've had an interview with Charles Vanderpool, who uh, made an interlinear copy of the Greek New Testament and Old Testament. Uh, I've had an interview with Young Penitent. We've had uh, multiple Oneness Pentecostal Journeys to Orthodoxy videos that have been produced. Uh, we've worked with Trey from uh, Telos Bound. Um, we have... We were on man, Kelly Powers. Have, yeah, we are on Kelly Powers. Yeah, talking about, you know, um, Oneness uh, versus Trinity uh, concepts with uh, Kelly Powers. And uh, Sam Shamoon, right? Talking with mm -hmm. Sam Shamoon a little bit. And, oh, and we did a, we even did a culture project um, on some emo punk rock band that apparently yeah. started to take off a little bit. So uh, we've and done we, a lot. <laughs> and we made a really funny video that I think is hilarious anyway. So though uh, the comment, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was funny. Yeah. 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 That was, yeah. Thank God for uh, Mr. Gnome who yeah. I, I think unfortunately is, is no longer one of our subscribers. Um, uh, but but his comments were, were were fun to read while he was here um and uh and my wife has done several saint videos right yeah. so lots of stuff lots of really good stuff that has been going on with archangels lots of shorts and stuff 
Um, and so again, from the bottom of our heart, thank you guys so much for your support and uh, for sharing, liking, commenting, being part of the live streams, joining our discord and everything like that. Yeah. So. I think 2024 is going to be even better. So yeah, we just got started. Yeah. And we didn't really know really how yeah, to go about doing a book club for free over the YouTube channel anyway. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we're going to be doing some more social things as well. Um, super ortho bros is a project for 24, uh, 2024. Uh, keep an eye out for that. And, uh, we look forward to, uh, to seeing you guys there as well. So, uh, awesome. Um, apart from that, well, do you, do you want to get into the reading right now? Or yeah. do you want to get into, uh, the Yo. books we've read? Get into that. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And then at the end, um, we, you know, being that it's a book club, we just want to talk about some of the books Justin and I have read and mm -hmm. just some just some thoughts, nothing too long since, uh, you know, it's end of the year. I feel like that's the thing a lot of YouTube channels are doing is just talking about mm -hmm. books we've read for the year. So, Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, now I'm going to I'm going to draw attention to this <laughs> thumbnail that I made. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> this is all tongue in cheek guys. Okay. Not even tongue in cheek. The tongue in cheek is a little too sarcastic. This is just fun. Okay. But, um, it is my opinion that the opinions, the theological opinions expressed by uh, father Stephen DeYoung and the theological opinions, uh, expressed by father John bear cannot both totally be, um, embraced without serious contradiction okay um and we're gonna go over that right a little bit and we've got uh some things kind of prepared uh, ahead of time for you so uh how do i get to my full screen mode here um, i don't know <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i know how to do it when it's uh yeah, mm, yeah. well anyways that's Close that's down. <laughs> That's close enough, right? So he starts out with, well, first, why don't, why don't you tell me, Cornell, what do you what do you think about this postscript? What is your first, your general thoughts about this postscript? Yeah, I mean, like you said, I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel attacked by the postscript. Is how I feel, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> well, I think this is what I was getting at when we had when when he came on, and I was questioning him. Um, you know what I mean? Yes. But like when he first came on, I was like, you know, Father John Bear saying this, you're saying this. These mm -hmm. are polar opposites, you know. Yes. And I'm not really sure um, that these can coexist, but you know, there's something to be said of a horizontal reading and a vertical reading where you get the cross mm -hmm. right, where because what Father John Bear represents is a vertical reading the, the yeah. apocalyptic Christ, boom, Jesus shows up and, um, you don't really know God until Jesus shows up. Right. 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 And then father, father Stephen Young would say, well, actually along the way, um, Jesus communed with Abraham and with the prophets and so on and so forth. Yeah. And so some would even say that they kept it a secret, you know, who, who, who was that? Uh, that the that the incarnation was kept secret. Yeah, like or, Jesus, like the identity of Jesus was kept secret by Moses, for instance. Yeah, right? I mean, they, yeah, I think that that's, I think that Paul teaches that. You know what I mean? That's what a mystery is, right? A mystery is that which is concealed, right, and then later revealed. And I think that that's, I think that the the doctrine that God has a son is something that is concealed under the old covenant. And is revealed, but the, the idea that it's revealed to Moses, but Moses keeps it to himself is something. Oh, that oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of of the opinion that Moses didn't necessarily know that he was. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so either. Yeah, I don't um, think so. yeah not but, intentionally. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I'm saying. I've heard that from somebody saying, "Well, they knew and they just kept it to themselves," kind of thing. And yeah, I think that's a little far fetched, but. Maybe um, I, I think it was concealed from the world. No one knew, not even the angels knew, you know, right. type what, that this would be a thing. 
Right. And, you know, the, one of the one of the ways that we can kind of look at that, um, I think we looked at that. Was it in first Peter? Where it talks about how the prophets inquired and the holy and the, even the angels looked into um, this this amazing uh, truth. Right. Um, and basically didn't know. I mean, the fact that they're inquiring uh, about it indicates that they didn't know. You know, here it is. First, it's uh, First Peter, uh, one ten. I'm going to pull this up here on the screen. Um, let's see. Uh, oops. Share screen and window. There you go. Share. Okay, so. It says, uh, here it is, whom having not seen you love, that's referring to Christ, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, this is probably telos, right? Um, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things, which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things that the angels desire to look into. So it seems to me from 1 Peter 1, 10 through 12, that the prophets themselves didn't really entirely understand uh, what it was that they were prophesying and that this was something that would be later on, um, mm -hmm. uh, later on be revealed. Yeah, yeah. So. And um, I think this is important also if you're talking to someone in um, like a like a listen to rabbi to buy a singer or whatever. And he would oh. like, well, this is not what the prophet said. I'm like, well, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. That was yeah. a really fun and good debate that I think people should probably look into, you know? Um, wh which one are you referring? Uh, the one he did with the, um, with the old Testament professor. Um, the one that you had shared in the oh, Discord. So, yeah, yeah. I just I just watched that last time. Yeah, night. very solid. Um, yeah. Me too. Is Jesus the promised Jewish Messiah? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, there's some of the Unnatural. stuff we'll, we'll definitely be talking about when we get to another book in the future, for sure. Uh, right, yeah. Do I mean, let's talk. Can we Can we talk about that? I want to talk a little yes, bit Yes, since that. we're only going over like seven pages <laughs> today. Right, yeah. Yeah, we... Right. Since it's just the postscript, we got time. Right. So um, after we are finished with um, On the Incarnation by St. Athanasius, we're not going to vote on the next book. The next book is going to be um, The Two Powers in Heaven by uh, Father, no, not Father, uh, Andrzej Orlov, right? I don't think he's a priest, but he's Orthodox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, right. we, I first learned of him from Father Stephen DeYoung. I didn't even know he was yes. uh, an author. So that shows you how um, I'm not in the, the circles as much, you know. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, so, yeah, we got that. And so that's going to be a really good read. And it's not very long. What is it, 180 pages or something? It's 180 pages. And um we encourage you to buy the book, but if for some reason you are not able to afford the book, contact us and we will uh, assist you in, in, in acquiring the book. Right, Cornell? Yeah, yeah, you can contact us. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, that this really gets to the heart of this, of, of this attack I felt by this chapter, right? Personally attacked, personally offended. My own patron saint. I feel I'm, I must defend at this <laughs> point. <laughs> right? So, so let's get into the, some of this stuff. All right. In, in my opinion, right. Um, 
Uh, let me get back to my shared screen here. Um, take a look at the, well, first of all, let me give you what's good. Okay. Let me, let me tell you, in my opinion, what is really good here. He says, what we see in Christ as proclaimed by the apostles is what it is to be God. Mm -hmm. Yet other than the God whom Christ calls upon his father and makes known through and is himself made known by the Holy Spirit. Okay. So this is father uh, John bears image of the Trinity, which I think is a solid image, right? What is it? How, why is it that we recognize that Jesus is God, right? We recognize Jesus as God primarily by what he, he does and what he accomplishes. In fact, um, in my opinion, uh, St. Um, Athanasius in, in the incarnation of the word, and we're, we're going to get into that, right? He starts with a soteriological concern, right? How is it that man can be saved? Who can, who can save man? Right. And he concludes that only God can save humanity. Right. And because only God can save humanity, the savior must be God. Right. So he pre, he starts with the presupposition that only God can save uh, uh, humanity. And then he goes through and he, uh, defends the divinity of Jesus and many of the things that uh, many of the arguments that he makes for the divinity of Jesus, particularly surrounding soteriology or the, the study of salvation or the doctrine of, of salvation, St. Basil the Great um, on his work on the Holy Spirit makes similar arguments to defend the divinity of the Holy Ghost, right? So um, what, do, what do you think about this, about this quote, man? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's a great quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, like otherwise, we're just speculating. Like right. Jesus is the concrete revelation of who God is. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, without that, we can make God to be all sorts of things. But here he is, sort of um, giving witness, testifying to who he actually is. Mm -hmm. In in a manner in which we can understand and know in the mode of our knowing, right? Mm -hmm. um, as humans, we can only know as in the way we can know. So in, in this way, by Jesus um, taking on humanity, the Son taking on humanity, this is the only way we can know God. Apart right. from which we get shadows, we get signs, we get things. Mm -hmm. um, we get inspiration, but here we are. We have a lived expression of who God is in front of us. Mm -hmm. And this is how we can have certain convictions about God um, being different than what we see early on. Right. We, there, there mm -hmm. is a sense where the understanding of God does um, progress. And this is where I'm sort of perplexed between Stephen DeYoung and Father John Bear. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because because Stephen DeYoung would say it's all there from start to finish. Yep, and I see more of a development, and then this mm -hmm. idea here's Jesus, and boom, this is the definitive account of what it means to be God, mm -hmm. right? And sort of crystallizes, and then that's how you understand the Old Testament now. You right. read Jesus back into the Old Testament. Right. So <laughs> to quote that the debate earlier that we're referencing, um, of course, we're going to read it Christologically, the Old Testament, right? That is and, the lens in which we're going to read it through. By the way, Rabbi Tovia Singer actually says, look, if that's the right way to read scripture, then I can see it every point. He's like, good. That's the that's the point, right? That really is the point. Yeah, Jesus, like, the resurrected Messiah, teaches us how to read scripture and he's right. the one because he rose from the dead who's going to be the authoritative lens that helps us understand how to read scripture like, like right? would god vindicate a messiah that was false no was his point right yeah and so therefore yeah he says jesus yeah. has these claims that before abraham was i am and i'll tell you man i i was talking to one of one of uh, jacob's friends um and he was a Christian at one point, but he, he reverted to becoming a Jew. Um, and uh, his, he was a Jew from ethnicity, but was a Christian or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, so what if Jesus rose from the dead? Who cares? 
the the criteria is this is what you need to be the Messiah. If you don't fulfill X, Y, Z, then you're not the Messiah. You know, it doesn't matter if you rose from the dead. And I was just like, <laughs> like, how, how do you come to that conclusion? Like, how do you, like, you know, anyway, sorry, forgive me. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's not just that he rose from the dead or was resuscitated. It's right. that he was transformed right. to be the high priest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that then sends us his life, the manna from heaven in the Eucharist. Right. Which is God himself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that that's where you don't just, it's not a resuscitation, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's a full on um, becoming incorruptible. Right. Yes. So, yeah, I, I thought just to kind of back up a little bit, I, I think there's some good points in here. Like you're saying you feel like a little abrasive, but that obviously you, you pulled that quote and you liked it. Yes. Um, yeah. But there's this one too, that I thought was really good. It says a lot of modern theology, despite all its variety operates in a manner that could only be described as an odd mixture of metaphysics and mythology. Yeah. I felt attacked by that one too. <laughs> Talk about it. Like, uh, what do you, yeah. What do you yeah. Mean? So let's talk about mythology, right? So uh, Father Stephen de Young points this out that the, the, the term myth does not mean something that didn't happen, right? That's not what a myth is. A, a myth is a story that is told within a community that brings up that, that is told and remembered on a continual basis, ritualistically, right? And um, which um uh brings about an understanding of a of of a community's past and a projection of their future right that's the concept of a myth right and it doesn't mean that uh that um that it's not true right it just means that this is the kind of living story, living tradition that is carried on by people from generation to generation. Um, and so I don't have a problem with using the term myth in reference to the Old Testament. It doesn't mean that it didn't happen, right? It just means that this is a communal story that gives, uh, get, tells the people that are living now, right, who they are and what 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 is expected of them and what their destiny is that's what a myth is yeah which we we have modern myths right that say this is all there is is only material matter and yeah well, you, you know just a machinations of the, the the cosmos is but clockwork and yeah you know we have can you own, get your hand off that yeah is it covering yeah it was echoing weird and causing static sorry sorry about that no, you're good, brother. But um, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there are obviously uh, bad myths. Like we had talked about, like the myth of, you know, modern progression. Like, oh, we are so much more morally superior and intellectually superior than the people in the past. And it's like, well, yeah. maybe the people in the past wouldn't have wanted to create something like an atom bomb. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. So. But. I think um, what I find interesting is it seems like he's using the historical critical method to uncover the pre-modern method, though. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Well, I to, you to, know, to, uh, to understand, like, the patristics, Irenaeus, uh, Gregory mm -hmm. of Nyssa, like, the way that he studies these people, he seems to be taking a very modern historical perspective to get to the pre-modern. It's almost yeah. a vehicle that he's using anyway. Yeah, it's very interesting what he's doing. Um I, I let me let me put it this way, right? When I when I say that um I think that it's important to keep the mythology in the Bible, right? Um what I mean by that is, you know, the Bible as Father Stephen de Young points out is written within a context you know, um, and it's in communication, Father Stephen DeYoung and Religion of the Apostles, it's in communication with other pagan myths. So, for example, Multiple you know, context, even. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, for example, we have stories about how the gods condescend and then give knowledge 
to um, to humans, right? Whether that be fire or whatever, right? And the ancient Greeks and the ancient pagans saw that as a good narrative. That's a great thing that the gods did. Well, the Jews were like, no, that's terrible. <laughs> you know, like these people have corrupted humanity and or these 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 fallen angels have corrupted humanity and we're in rebellion with God and things like this. And so or just the whole concept of, you know, um uh, the giants and the Nephilim, and, you know, the watchers and things like this. And, and this being the justification for what people would call genocidal passages in the old covenant un under the old Testament, go through, kill all the men, kill all the women, kill all the children. Right. Well, it was like, well, if you understand that these are giant tribes and that these are not humans, the way that we think of humans, Right then then that lens sort of changes right and so um and 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 i i think that that is important that context is important um for reading the scripture so i'm not i'm not a fan of demythologizing the bible i think that protestants do that a lot when you start seeing things like you know a desert owl instead of lilith who's clearly a demon you know what i mean in that context yeah, the demythologizing de started happening under Boltmann. And uh, interestingly enough, I, I feel like some of, some of the things that Father John Barry does actually reminds me of Boltmann. Right. Um, where he talks about, well, Scripture really isn't Scripture until this, right? When you're, mm -hmm. when you're reading it and you're studying it and you're doing the historical critical thing, even though it's Scripture, it's not Scripture yet. Not to you. Right. Yeah. It's right. only scripture in the church. Yeah. Until it's preached or proclaimed. Right. 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 And um, I don't know. I feel like when I've studied scripture, it's scripture. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've, I've had moments where I've been reading and, 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 and you know, felt illuminated and aha and like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, that was edifying that I just, you know, was able to stumble mm -hmm. upon this idea while studying even if yeah. it is by myself, um, yeah. which, you know, always has to be balanced out. But mm -hmm. um, I feel like some of my best moments have been doing that anyway. Right. But, yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I've read, I've been reading just even in my daily Bible reading and I go, Oh, you know what I mean? And, uh, and those moments come and it's just, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know. Um, yeah, so for for Boltman, you know, the resurrection actually didn't happen. It's something that you experience. Jesus resurrects in your heart. Yeah, you know, and that so you don't really need a historical resurrection. And I don't think Father John Bear thinks that. But until he sort of presents it a little but, bit, but but you you get you get flavors of the the sort of idea where you know yeah <laughs> yeah it's sort of like early like 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 a couple weeks ago when i was like does he believe that the virgin birth actually happened right as a historical event that that the virgin well, mary could and he would say well what matters is that you become the virgin mother of the word <laughs> and i'd say that's great i agree right saint yeah. simeon talks about that yeah but he'd also say that's not the same thing as what happened to the Theotokos, right? He like remember remember reading through that? He's like, you know, by the way, in case you think I'm equating you to the Theotokos, God forbid, no, I'm not equating you to the Theotokos because what you're doing metaphorically, she did actually, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um I I'm comfortable with all the mystical uh stuff that we see in St. Simeon that Father John Bear is pointing us towards. But if there's no history behind it, if these things didn't actually happen, then there's no meat there to sink your teeth into. It. It's just empty foam. You know what I mean? It's like a yeah. It, it, it's uh, it's games that kids are making up to play. Right. Yeah. It's just yeah. us conjuring up games to play to distract right. us from reality. Right. I mean, I can get a good message out of Harry Potter. Yeah. You know, but the Bible's not Harry Potter. Yeah. You know, it's not Aesop's. So, and that's kind of where I, in my opinion, I get a little uncomfortable with 
Father John Bear. But I'll tell you what really makes me uncomfortable, and it's going to be this next quote. Okay. Um, uh, this next quote really bothered, really got my uh, my goat. So your, your gizzard, my gizzard, really got it. Okay. So first of all, I don't like how he keeps referring to me as a modernist. Okay. Um, he says in the modern paradigm, the second person of the Trinity turns out to be a temporal being who did various things as the pre-incarnate logos before becoming incarnate as Jesus Christ. His existence as Jesus Christ is but an episode in a longer biography. This is the very position that the Council of Nicaea and those following were at pains to refute. Okay, let's let's deal with this 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 big loaded statement, okay? Um uh, uh, he is saying that the people at the Council of Nicaea, the Holy Fathers of the Church, are refuting the idea that the Logos, like, like you know how we say the angel of the Lord of the Old Covenant, wisdom of the Old Covenant, um, the the Memra of the, the Word of the Lord of the Old Covenant, um, all of these things find their fulfillment, but actually more than just find their fulfillment actually are Jesus Christ acting and moving in the old covenant people. Right. And he seems to be saying that the, that the council of Nicaea is trying to refute that, which means I feel like he's calling me an Aryan man. Like that's what it feels like. It feels like he's calling me an Aryan and I don't like that. So, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let you know. me help you out here. Yeah. I he the reason why he's not wrong is the way that he has worded some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. But the but the problem is it's not necessary for the modern paradigm to believe that the second person of the Trinity is temporal. I think mm -hmm. that's the key word there. It's temporal. Because he's saying if modern paradigm equals temporal second person of the trinity mm -hmm. just because you have examples of that doesn't mean that that's the case that this is necessary to the modern paradigm because there's plenty of people who would say no uh this isn't a temporal being but in in actuality to lay person you're like oh yeah then jesus comes right and it's as if like all of a sudden god had a son as if mm -hmm. god was not temporal like the son wasn't temporal right as if he was this eternal procession that was always with the father mm -hmm. um so i think that's what he's getting at is something to do with this idea that you think that jesus is this um being that now exists in time and space right so let's let's talk about that right so uh i i i, I took a paragraph okay um, and I fed it to chat GPT and then I said, what does the word temporal mean in this context? Okay. And, um, it says in this context, temporal refers to something related to time or existing within the framework of time. Okay. Um, and it says the statement is suggesting that in the modern paradigm being Discussed, the second person, the Trinity, is considered to be a being that exists within the confines of time. I'm not sure if I would say that the Logos exists within the context of time in the sense that he's confined to the context of time, right? But I certainly do think that he is interacting. I mean, just like the way that we... I mean, if we can't have a God who is able to exist within the context of time then we can't have an incarnation at all. Well, it, you know what I mean? It's God manifested himself, you know, right. in, in Christ. Right. And this is a manifestation and the manifestation is what is subjug subjugated to time and space and whatever material laws mm -hmm. there is. Um, but the actual person, the hypostasis, the logos is immutable and passable and mm -hmm. eternal and there is no change yeah and i think yeah. that's something that he's wanting to protect but i just don't see it necessary that modern paradigm means this 
Right. And not but only that, though, I feel I like would... this is, I feel like this exists prior to the modern paradigm. Like we're, we're, we're about to go over a bunch of two, two powers stuff. Right. Um, well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with this idea that this way of doing theology just sprang up during the 1800s or 1700s. Right. Yeah. Um, so he talks about that. The, um, what, what is it called? The, the, the German word. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's yeah, that Hans, history. is that Hans Fry that first came up with that? I don't remember, but yeah, it's the salvation I think, I, history. I, I, I think the concept is there prior, but I think he would contend no. I think that's yeah. where he would say no. We don't have a salvation history, but I feel like he would say maybe we're reading into it. But you see Paul saying like, "Well, look," and then he would point out the exodus and mm -hmm. the wilderness and you know he would go through the times and say look and now we have christ and it's almost like paul's laying out sort of a history of god's yeah. work um yeah but i guess it's yeah. complicated it, you know i mean maybe it's a little complicated maybe but um all, all i know my thing is it's just it's not necessary to correlate yeah. modern paradigm with this necessarily. I think yeah. it, can, it can be true, but I don't think it's necessarily true. I don't think so either. And, and and this is what I what I'm getting at. I think this is a direct contradiction to religion of the apostles here. Yeah. Um, when, for example, the Holy Trinity was manifest at the baptism of Christ, this was not a shocking new revelation, but rather a clarification and identification of the persons of the Godhead already known. Okay. And um, the previous, so this is actually on the chapter on the Holy ghost. The previous chapter is on the, the son mm -hmm. of, of God. Um, and really he's just building a world, a worldview, right? Uh, you have divine father and son is one chapter. And then the next is the present, the spirit, the presence, the name of God is the next chapter. And, um, and he's just showing, hey, this is the way that the Jews thought about this angel of the Lord figure. Yeah. Hey, this is the way that the Jews thought about the presence of God. Hey, this is very Trinitarian. You know what I mean? And uh, there are plenty of things that were shocking. It's just, is this what's shocking? Right. 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 The, the shocking part is the shocking is the cross. Is the, the, the kenosis, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, what's that's, shocking. that's, hey, I'm not going to, you know, do a, a, a revolt, a revolution. I'm not going mm -hmm. to do these things. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do all the things that Rabbi Tobias Singer says I'm going to do. Right, 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 <laughs> um, right. At least in this coming, right? Right. And this actually, um, I will point out that uh, Father John Bear uh, says, um, uh, he says basically that. Um, we are not reading scripture. Like nobody would have read scripture um, in this way uh, if it wasn't for uh, the resurrection, right? You know, this was this 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 way of understanding scripture, particularly that the Messiah would come, that he would die, that he would suffer, right? That this is um, what do you say? Uh, that this is unexpected. I, I, that's my point. Is that it's it's an unexpected way of reading scripture right away, right? Let me see if I can find that. Go ahead. I mean, there's a lot that's unexpected. Yeah. Um. I think Key and and Stephen Young, Father Stephen Young's quote here is clarification and identification, mm -hmm. right? Because it is murky, and so there is a sense of shock there, and and, and in one sense because it isn't so clear mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah so there there is a sense where you know where, where jesus does identify himself as the son of man who is riding on the clouds and um i think that's where the clarification is happening when he, mm -hmm. when he says that he's the son of man yes yeah it's like oh now things start clicking Right. If you, if you accept Jesus at his word, that is. Um, let's let's look at these uh, these two figures here, um, and then we've got another figure that you think uh, more adequately um, shows blur, what he's brother. doing. Oh wait, there it is. That's better. Does, does it look better? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let I me see if I can why. make this 
if I can make this bigger here. Um, you can close the tab down on the do left, maybe. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see. That opened a little bit. I don't know why I can't just see it full screen. Let's see. But uh, above above my know. pay grade. Yeah, I don't know. I have to figure it out. Um, uh, whatever. The point is, right on the on the on the top side here. Well, here, I'll just zoom in this way. Does that look better? Yeah, I would say the on the on the left besides the three falls type stuff, he just has one fall. Um, right. This, yes. This, this yeah, is yeah. this is sort of Stephen DeYoung, you know, in a way. Right. Yeah. This me. is Father Stephen DeYoung to me. Yeah. This is exactly right. But this is more than just Father Stephen DeYoung. This is the yeah. most biblical theologies that you see. Right. Yeah. Biblical theologies are going to start with the doctrine of God. Right. Yeah. Well, so I mean, actually, some Protestant ones will start with the doctrine of the Bible, and then go into the doctrine of God, which I think is interesting. Right? They will start with the doctrine of the Bible and then go into the doctrine of of God because they're going to say that everything we need to know about God is going to be contingent on Scripture. Right? But um, but apart from that, you have the Trinity, you have creation, you have the fall, you have Moses. Um, I don't know why Isaiah is particularly prophets yeah know. but just the prophets right you have the law yeah. you have the prophets then you have the incarnation of the son of god his death burial resurrection his ascension into heaven the holy ghost comes down you have the uh anointing of the holy of the holy apostles and their ministry leading to saint ignatius and the council of nicaea all the way going into the future then you have the second coming right this is this is pretty basic pretty normal I think that this is that there's nothing wrong with this, right? But this is my problem with Father John Bear. Um, in his book, he seems to be saying this whole concept is modernism. And if you are reading scripture in this way, you're actually reading scripture against the church fathers, against the um uh the councils, and almost you seem to be Arian, right? Because if he's saying that in this above quote here, right? Right. This is the very position that the council of Nicaea and those falling were at pains to refute. If he's saying that, I feel like he's calling me an Aryan respectfully, right? That's, um, that's what I feel like. I, I, do you think that that's what he's saying? I don't think he would say that because he's not saying it here. Okay. Cause All he's right. saying there's the Trinity, right? Yeah. But, but he was, he is saying like, Hey, this is, um, you may not be Arian, but you um, are reading scripture like the Arians, maybe. <laughs> yeah, because not not all the time would you um, formally accept something, even if you might have some foundational things that <coughs> you would say are inconsistent with your conclusion. Sure, you know, yeah. maybe that's what he would say. I, I would say it would be unfavorable to say Father John Bear thinks. You're an Aryan if you don't take his view. I think he would yeah. say, oh, no, I, that's not. Okay. But, but he would probably say, look, this is this salvation history stuff is not the right way to do theology. Is what I think he would be fine kind of so, saying that much. I, I, I do want to pull this quote. This is, um, this is a quote from my patron saint, St. Saint Justin Martyr. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is also being quoted in uh, Religion of the Apostles. That's where I'm pulling the quote from right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I've read this before. He says, I shall give you another testimony, my friends, from the scriptures that God begot before all creatures a beginning, a certain rational power from himself, who is called by the Holy Spirit, sometimes the glory of the Lord, others the Son, others wisdom, others an angel, then, then God, and then Lord and Logos, and on another occasion, he calls himself captain when he appears in human form to Joshua, the son of Nave. Right? This this is how Saint Justin Martyr is reading scripture, right? And um, I think that's relevant. I think that's really relevant. And so, okay, so that that this is where he got my goat, right? And and then he and then he and then he and he is offering as an alternative this, right? And a couple of key things, right? Number one, you have the second coming, right? Um, which is being replaced with the Lord Christ, the coming one, right? Um, 
and the coming one is 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 particularly Christ coming always coming into our hearts coming into a, a coming to us through the Holy Eucharist probably right and the, so there's something mystical about that the Saint Simon the new theologian right talks about this is the bread that comes down from heaven instead of the bread that came down from heaven it's this continual coming you know um and I think that Father John Bear is highlighting that, right? So I I understand what he's saying here, and I actually I agree with that premise there. But I also do believe in a future return of Jesus. So I, I don't think that these I, I I don't feel like some of this stuff should be viewed as contradictory. But I do feel like some of this thing stuff. I, I don't know. But over here, he starts with scripture and particularly the, the apostles and the cross, right? And it's like, um. It, it, it is understanding scripture through means of the cross, which is great. And the, and the, and the understanding of the, of the apostles and then passing that forward. So you have scripture, uh, tradition, canon, right? Um, apostolicity all, all in this chart real quick. Yeah. And scripture is, you know, the first Testament, you right. know, that's what he would say. Right. And right. then ahead of it is the apostles, which would have, you know, created the second testament right, right um and then outside of that little bubble which i would maybe describe the bubble as revelation yeah i think so but i also generally I, I mean i also tend to think that the church fathers are giving us revelation not new revelation necessarily or not like I, I i don't know see this is where like i i don't think father john bear would agree with that yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because Revelation actually is um, God Himself. Only the Apocalypse, right? Only God can reveal God. Right, but um, if we understand, if we understand the Church um, incarnationally, right, that the Church is in fact the body of Christ, right, then that means that the Church is the presence of Jesus on Earth. Which means if the church says something pertaining to the truth or morality, then is or, or just really, I, I don't know. I, 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 it, it manifests and witnesses yeah. to to Christ. Right. Um, right. Is, is the point. It's not that it is the revelation itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are, that's what I think anyway. Um, yeah. It's so... So anyways, uh, if this is um, this graph to me is maybe a little more complicated than um, a Protestant graph that I actually kind of like. If you want to pull that yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's take a look at this. Now this is this is Karl Barth. <laughs> Call Protestant, like oh no, I can't agree with that. <laughs> well, he he calls himself neo orthodox. That's the way that he identifies himself. Yeah. Right. Um, and so he's not, uh, he's not in communion with the church and he didn't die in the church. Right. But, um, uh, in the Orthodox church, uh, but he's, he's, he's a very interesting fellow. Right. Um, a lot of Orthodox people like him. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't particularly go ahead. I, I particularly like help, how me, how he helped me understand what we mean by the word person in the Trinity. Right. Talking about mode of being. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, um, right. which is not the same thing as modalism, right? Modalism right. is like the Father is the Son, the Son is the Holy Ghost, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, mo modes of being is actually what uh, Saint John of Damascus says when he says that the Father exists as unbegotten, the Son exists as begotten of the Father, and the Holy Ghost exists as proceeding from the father and that these are different means or different modes whereby God exists. Right. Um, or different modes whereby divinity is expressed. Right. Um, and I thought that was, that was good. Right? Yeah. Cause at that point you're not saying that the father is the son, the son, you know, you're not saying unbegotten is begotten. Right. Cause that would be a kind well, you're, you're, yeah, you're not, you're saying there's a relationship genuinely an eternal mm -hmm. relationship. Yeah, Father, Son, yeah. Holy Spirit within these modes of being. Right, right. That is one being. Right, right. Um, so. Whereas the others denying any sort of 
relationship that is person personal in nature personal in, in nature at all yeah. yeah but but um just to kind of this is in his book I, as you can see i put it there the mm -hmm. evangelical theology um mm -hmm. and then so at the, in the middle there you have jesus christ as the word of god and the point of what bart's trying to make is that jesus is the word of god like formally mm -hmm. he is the word the logos mm -hmm. and scripture isn't the word of God in a, right. a qualified sense. Right. And this is something that, you know, when we talk to um, our Muslim uh, associates, right. Um, we understand, they, they believe that the word of God comes down and it is a book and it is the Quran, right. And the Quran is the word of God on earth. That's what it is. Right. We don't view scripture the same way that Muslims view scripture. We don't believe that, the that that an angel is speaking to the apostle paul and the apostle paul is writing down what the angel is saying what he, that he got from god right we understand scripture to be a uh, the apostles writing as they're full of the holy spirit and they are writing specifically about uh god and we believe that the holy ghost protects them from error right um w would you say that that's that's about right yeah so the next bubble is what he would say Paul is doing right. and the other apostles, the witness of scripture. Right. So mm -hmm. you have the revelation itself, which is the most inner circle. That is the revelation of God. Mm -hmm. That next circle, the witness of scripture are the people who saw touched and felt Jesus, people who knew mm -hmm. Jesus, saw Jesus, the apostles, right. Mm -hmm. They had firsthand phenomenal accounts of Jesus, privilege that we do not have mm -hmm. we don't have an eyewitness account of who jesus was i've never seen jesus you know uh, mm -hmm. i'm relying on someone who did see jesus though mm -hmm. right and so their witness it has been um given an account in their letters and in their writings in which we would say this is this is an accurate account of who jesus is and this is also why we don't you know, lose our, lose our minds over differences in the gospel accounts like Matthew, Mark, Luke, right? Because we understand that these are biographies of their accounts and how they experience Jesus and they're putting it together for community, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then you have the tradition of the witness of scripture to the revelation. So, that's the church. Okay. So that's the tradition there. So you, you need these. So the, the most inner circle is Jesus himself. Then you got the witness of scripture who knew Jesus. And then you have the church proclaiming this witness of Jesus. And of course, the closer you are to Jesus, the better, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a reason why, in fact, to maybe Karl Barth's dismay, that you should care about Ignatius and you should care about um, the early church fathers like Clement of Rome and Barnabas and um, all those early accounts that were, that would have known like Polycarp, that would have known the apostles, right? right. Um, because there is a sense of proximity and pro probability of understanding their writings better. Like I don't, mm -hmm. e even the best, even the person who knows, um, the best Greek today, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't know it nearly as well as Polycarp did and who right. would have understood Paul better Ignatius right. as well. Right. right. Um, study all the Greek yeah. you want. Right. You're still not going to be able to do it like as well do. as them. Yeah. Especially not, if, not as a first century guy, you know, and someone who first century guy, yeah. knew them or knew someone who knew them like, Hey, you knew Paul. Hey, you knew John. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did he mean by this? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, this right here, this proclamation of the church here, this is really what is being discussed here on this bottom side where he says, mm -hmm. Ignatius Nicaea, the liturgy of St. Basil and icons, mm -hmm. right? These are all the, th this line right here, this is all what is being proclaimed in the church, right? Um, and it seems. Um, <laughs> this is where we would diverge from Bart. Right. This is where we would diverge from Bart because I think, you know, because he's, 
he's a he's a Protestant, right? And he's a very strong Protestant. Um, and maybe the church fathers don't mean much to him, or maybe church iconography don't he cared mean about much him. For hymns, right? Yeah, he he liked the he liked the mm-hmm. like Nicaea. He wrote about the Apostles' Creed, and he valued those things. He, right. he basically revamped Calvin, and he was a reformed guy. He made Calvin right. a little a little less monstrous. Right. Right. A lot less monstrous, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like what Andrew said. I'm a simple man. If you put Father Stephen in the thumbnail, I'm going to click on it. <laughs> well, I guess we just got to put Father Stephen Young in every thumbnail. Just like, where's yeah. Waldo? Like a little small <laughs> Stephen Young somewhere. <laughs> just, where's Waldo? <laughs> that would be hilarious. That's great. Um, solid, man. Solid. Well, I think that this I think that this fairly summarizes this chapter. The yeah, the postscript part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the postscript, yeah. Um spent a lot of time on just six pages. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. I mean we did talk about other things too, but yeah. Um, you know, this is this is really I think I think that it is fascinating to put these people next to each other. You know what I mean? By the way, I think if you want to, because uh, I, I I asked Father uh, Stephen DeYoung when he came and he visited um, on our channel, you know, kind of what he thought about, um, thought, actually, you were the one, I think, who mm-hmm. asked that question, right? Yeah, he goes... <sighs> I like, I like it Father after John, a yeah. long sigh. <laughs> it was like this sigh. Of... It was like, I don't want to say what I'm going to have to say, you know? <laughs> and then he's like, you know, I think if we got together, there would be a lot of agreement, I think is what he, what he said. Um, yeah. I we also he... said this isn't his, his ball. Like his, it's not his, it's not his court, you know? Well, um, he, he's referring to second temple period literature. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, not aware of the fact that there would have been these understandings of, like, like we talked about the two powers and this idea of, like, the Trinity really isn't that far off from what was going on mm-hmm. in that um, Second Temple period and how yeah. they understood um, God. If you want to see a video on... Um... Uh, on this conversation, we're bringing up uh, Father John Bear. Now, this was, I had not read The Mystery of Christ yet. This was what I had learned from, um, this really is a bit of a crash course on his church history stuff, you know, um, the Nicene Faith Volumes 1 and 2 and The Way to Nicaea. Um, but if you want to see uh, the question that we had with Father Stephen DeYoung and what his answer was, it's it's there. It's in the chat box now. So, um cool well we had several really good books that we read this year um and i'm glad that we read every one of them you know um yeah yeah, so so far we have read uh volumes one and two of um hey let's uh let's religion of the apostles yeah uh, we, yeah, we read Religion of the Apostles, read vol- vol- Volumes 1 and 2 of St. Simeon, the New Theologian. And we have read uh, The Mystery of Christ's Life and Death. Um, and then apart from that, on the st- off of the stream, uh, as a community, we've read the whole Gospel of Matthew. We've read Ignatian Ephesians. We've read Second Clements. What else have we read uh, off stream? I don't know what all of you guys read. I wasn't in every single one of them for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, Jonah. We read Jonah and Ruth, you know, uh, which is always, which was a lot of fun. And then, um, but apart from that, uh, apart from you guys, I've read uh, Arise, O God by uh, Father Andrew Stephen Damick and uh, Ignatius, uh, the God bearer, right? Um, what, what have you read apart from? Apart from that, I mean, I'm trying to look here. I got several that I've was able to get through this year, gratefully. Um, just to kind of get you an idea, those are some of the ones that I was able to complete. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, between, with Cornell and I. Um, um, well, I've I've lent out some of my books too. Um, 
and some of them I can't find. Like I don't know where my Richard Bauckham book on Revelation went, but um, Michael, where is it? <laughs> well, no, Michael has my uh, Nicholas Cabasilis a uh, Life in Christ book. So, oh, okay. Which yeah, sure. I would I would really like that one, but yeah, um, yeah, just some of these. I don't know. Like this is one that Father Stephen Young recommended to me. Okay. Um, uh, Paul's works of the law in the perspective. Oh, I'll second, find it. Second century reception. Yeah. So I read through that one this um, year when. That was after our conversation and then met up with him here in Phoenix when he was um, here for the conference, the Antiochian conference um, in Phoenix. I don't know if you remember that or not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. That. So he recommended that book to me. And um, so read that. Um, yeah. I'd like a follow up conversation with him actually to kind of pick his brain because he. I don't feel like I was that far off from this book really at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's like, you're, he said that he said in private to me, he goes, you're thinking of the, the, the law, like a Protestant. Yeah. He's <laughs> like an old Lutheran. You're, you're reading the law, like an old Lutheran. And, I don't uh, think so. I feel like the Lutherans have a pretty negative view of the law. Right. I mean, Oh yeah. Lutherans are well, Luther himself. And when this was good because, um, he does go through different Protestant takes, like Luther, Calvin, Boltmann, mm -hmm. and, a, and a, like a good Reformed guy that's contemporary. So he does go through that. And then he goes through some new perspective takes, which is really helpful, because I didn't know much about E.P. Sanders, who is the one okay. who basically brought up the new perspective. And then that got developed with like James Dunn and N.T. Wright, and he he differentiates the the new perspective accounts and the old perspective accounts and how they're different and where they come together. So this was a really good book. Um, I liked it. Um, Stephen Young said it was the best book in a decade on Paul. So really, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so this this takes a unique approach. Um, basically says, okay, cool. We know what old perspective says. We know what the new perspective says. What did the earliest people, like if they talked about works of the law or, you know, the law or Torah or works, what did they say about the law? And um, falls fairly close, I guess, with N.T. Wright, uh, what, what mm -hmm. he says um, about what the works of the law meant, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and just going through those examples of the different second century period, like the different authors and stuff was interesting. And I think there's a lot of more work that could be done after reading it. There's like yeah. a lot more that could be done. Very so good. that was interesting. Yeah. That's what else did you read? Uh, Divine Energies and Divine Action. By David Bradshaw. Yeah, so that was good. Um Yeah, so this is uh, David Bradshaw, if you guys don't know. He's more known for his Aristotle East and West and really has a lot to say about divine energies in particular and sort of energy essence distinctions. So um, really good. If you're looking for just, hey, I don't know anything about this essence energy stuff, this is, mm -hmm. to me, probably one of the most accessible books out there on it that gets you up to speed pretty quick. Okay. Yeah. So I would say that's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of them. So. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And again, I, I, I really recommend um, uh, for, for, for those of us who are less uh, scholarly uh, than <laughs> Uh, than Cornell here. I think Arise, O God, uh, the Gospels, uh, the Gospel of Christ, the Feet of Demons, Sin, and Death is great. I find that to be a companion book to uh, the religion of the apostles. Right? Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, like, if, oh, I remember thinking uh, at the time I could buy one of these two books without my wife yelling at me. And um, eventually I got them both, but uh, <laughs> my wife says inspirational. But this is very solid. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, 
there was uh you know a statement in the rise of god that made me uh curious about father andrew stephen damick's uh doctrine uh pertaining the doctrine of the trinity or, or view on the trinity uh but father stephen de young actually clarified uh an analogy that uh father stephen de young or father andrew stephen damick um put forward so i think that would be worth taking a look at as well if you guys are wanting to maybe take a look at that and then the other one that i read um was uh god bearer also by father andrew steven steven damick um and what i really liked about ignatius god bearer uh, or, or bearing god uh the life and works of saint ignatius of antioch the god bearer um what's really interesting fascinating about this is that uh ignatius he we have seven letters of ignatius but there's actually like 11 right and the protestants really really did not like ignatius because ignatius has a very high um view of the bishop and of the eucharist and you know a lot of people thought that what was happening was roman catholics were um making up doctrines and then attributing them to ignatius and so what happened is these all of these letters became um what do you call it suspect right all of them they're they're all considered phonies and that but because of protestant scholarship and them doing the hard work for like a hundred years we've confirmed seven of them these are authentic uh letters and so whenever you pick up a copy of um, of the church fathers that has the epistles uh, of Ignatius in them, the seven epistles, just know that you can have assurance that these were actually written by Ignatius because of Protestant scholarship. So there is, there is a benefit to some Protestant scholarship. I know that there's some people in the Orthodox church uh, in, in our Orthodox community that kind of uh, have a dim view of Protestant scholarship. Um, and how we should interact with it, but it's yeah. it's uh, it's it's worth noting that the reason we know that these uh, seven letters are Ignatian is because Protestants are very good at studying. <laughs> yeah, well, the, <laughs> you know the, the new catechism that's out. Just look at the footnotes. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of stuff. It's <laughs> kind of kind of chuckled at it, like yeah. yeah. Those are, several protestant sources mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in this orthodox catechism <laughs> no you know, I, i'll tell you one that's funny i'll be right back let me show you this one this is great yeah while you're doing that oh lord oh, open a can of worms oh no can of worms uh, all right have you guys ever seen mean green so <laughs> this is um the bible and the Holy Fathers for Orthodox, right? And um, on some of the days, the uh, the source that you're going to be reading from is uh, Schofield, from the Schofield Study Bible, right? Um, what is the name of this Orthodox Catechism? The Orthodox Catechism of the OCA, the official o OCA. Orthodox Catechism is the one that we're looking at. Um, so let me see here. Um, and I always just thought that was interesting. Uh, I have this. I have this. Unfortunately, I almost never use it because uh, it's designed for use in the Greek church and does not include the Lucan jump that the Slav uh, that the Slavs have. Um, and so it's kind of it's kind of rough to keep up with it. Um, but yeah, Reverend Schofield, um, in several places, seeking corners is the aim of Christian life, uh, redeeming the time, love of love and the sacraments, the mighty man, the, the mighty humbled saints, sin and the Holy Spirit. Um, oh, wait, no, I just read a bunch of, uh, yeah, never mind. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, you got so, Schofield in there. You got Schofield in here, which is interesting. So, if you don't know who Schofield is, then yeah, he's a dispensationalist. 
you know. Was he um, the one who stole horses? No, I don't know. I've never heard anything like that. Thank you. Schofield horses. stole horses. Was he a Bible? Did he sell Bibles? Is that what Schofield did back in the day? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think he stole horses. Let me see. Schofield. Uh, horse. I'm <laughs> seeing. I don't know if it was him. Maybe it was someone else. It was one of those uh, rapture preaching preachers mm -hmm. that would steal people's horses while the <laughs> something like that. I can't remember where I heard that from. Anyways. Yeah. But yeah. um yeah, that sounds good. So just so that book basically just verifies like, hey, in fact, Ignatius is a reliable witness. Um the letters we have are authentic and the fact that they are authentic should matter a lot to you because it's such an early witness and gives you a lot of details about the what, Eucharist. The, yeah, the Eucharist the bishop, session. Yeah. Martyrdom. Martyrdom, yeah. Relics. Yeah, all of that. He so, wants to become bread. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So those are those are some of the books that we recommend uh reading uh for the future. And we're, we're man, we're we're excited to keep this uh this uh, book club ro uh, rocking and rolling. So, um, now Cornell has recently uh, gotten another job, and it's getting harder for him to do two books um, for the book club. So, what we're going to do is we are going to do Object to Icon with uh, Father Nicholas Finley, and then after Father Nicholas Finley, and uh, we are done with this book, which is not very long. We're going to get into uh, St. Athanasius. Now, if you are able to get a copy of St. Athanasius on the incarnation, we uh, recommend that you do so. Um, and if you have a difficulty um, acquiring that, uh, message us, contact us, and we will definitely get you a copy of on the incarnation. So, yep. yep. So that's going to be the order from object to icon. Um, on, on the, the incarnation, uh, incarnation, and then from there we'll go to um, Andrew's Yeah, and Andrew. let's let's take a look at that now. Um, now, guys, two powers is real scholarship, right? Um, uh, it's real scholarship. We're gonna be there. Just, there may even be Hebrew Andrew words. J. Uh, yeah. Like that? No, there's an I. There it is. That's fine. It found it. It found it. So here it is. So uh, the glory of the invisible God, the two powers in heaven, traditions in early Christology, Jewish and Christian texts. It was just published two years ago. Okay. Um, going on three. And uh, this is, this is real scholarship. Okay. And um, so you may, you may run into some words that you don't recommend. You don't recognize either in Hebrew or Greek or, or whatever. Um but I think that you guys can handle it because the stuff is going to be fascinating. We're going to be looking at the Talmud. We're going to be looking at um, the Metatron tradition and things like that. Um, and so that's very exciting. So Yeah. I mean, this is stuff that everyone's talking about. Oh, yeah. Honestly, this is... like it's just it's kind of cutting edge. And the first time I, we, we learned of Andre Orlov was with Stephen DeYoung. So he's the one mm -hmm. who kind of pointed us to him. So he's he's kind of had an influence on the channel, even just with his little uh, hour and a half, two hour long appearance with us. So yeah. point yeah. us in a few different directions. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, now that I am aware of it, um, it's almost like it's everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like, oh, <laughs> this is scholarship that I'm seeing left and right. Like, even just in that debate last night that was brought up, which he more referenced Alan Siegel, but. Um, yeah. Well, he referenced Alan Siegel because Alan Siegel was a Jew and he was talking to a Jew. Right. And that matters, you know, in his context. Well, it didn't matter to him. Ah, uh, to fuck to, to yeah to the rabbi yeah, yeah yeah like he's like oh I don't care about him he doesn't believe Daniel was written by Daniel and that it was just you know obfuscating you know yeah 
Yeah. Um, the other the other one right here is the Holy Angels by Mother Alexandra. Okay, guys, get this book. You can get it on audiobook uh if you for credit or whatever, you know, one credit. But um get this book. It, it is done by the Holy Um uh Orthodox Monastery of the Transfiguration. These ladies pray for us. Uh, they are sweeter than saccharin, they're amazing. And um, take care of the nuns. Right, buy this book. Take care of the nuns. You'll be doing a good deed, and then read it. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, this is good stuff. Very beautiful. Very good. Solid work. Cool. Yep. Well, thanks, thanks, guys, again for helping us mm -hmm. hit some milestones. Hopefully, we can hit some more milestones in 2024, and um, look forward to just keep learning and growing. Yeah. yeah. Look forward to it, guys. All right. Godspeed. Appreciate you. Bye. See y'all.